Do you need terrifying, scary monsters? Do you need lore? Do you need new weapons? My friends, I've got just the thing. What's going on, y'all? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. Time for another book review. Today, Lost Omens, Monsters and Myth, and a very shiny Fafnir. If you like what you see, remember to like, subscribe, ding the bell, stay caught up on all your stuff. For now, let's dive in. Okie doke, so Monsters of Myth, it's a real big book with a bunch of monsters that exist for you to put in your campaign as things for your party to fight. Hooray, roll credits. Except not at all because there's so much more going on in this book than how it reads, at least to me, at a glance. For starters, when one flips through this wonderful addition to the Lost Omens line, the first thing that grabs me, perhaps surprising no one, is the sheer amount of extra stuff that you can find in this book oftentimes literally in the form of prose that is written if you open up Fafnir's entry you get a bunch of anglo-saxon poetry which is wonderful and i appreciate it and it exists for a wide amount of the creatures presented in this book who also run the level gamut way harder than I thought they would. When I see a book like this, I'm harkened back to 3.5's Elder Evils, and truly they scratch the same itch, but Monsters of Myths, mythological monsters, run the gamut from level 3 to level 24. Of the 26 monsters presented, 12 of them are level 10 or lower, which is about half of them. Which means this book provides content for GMs, not just for that eh, three years from now if we run the same campaign and it reaches high level play. Yeah, sure, why not? I'll sick Kothaga's Dance of Disharmony upon you, as opposed to the other spawns of Rovagug we've dealt with. Rather, if you would prefer something along the lines of even just a younger Lenorm, the proverbial baby dragon, there's stats for it. But it gets better. The book has a boatload of content that exists literally just for players. We're talking everything from unique level 20 weapons like the Sword Redil from Fafnir's entry up to including the Mosquito Witch, not as a thing you're going out to deal with, but rather as a witch patron because who doesn't want to evoke buzzing and crawling insects to climb on top of a foe and bite them. Ironically, that would be an interesting patron for Strength of Thousands which I guess I'm gonna just keep bringing up every time I sit down and talk to y'all, aren't I? I'm seeing a pattern. As the Lost Omens campaign setting is wont to do, this serves to paint a very wide brush across the setting of Galarian at large, both serving to flesh out creatures that already existed and in some cases were literally statted in first edition, to grabbing things from across the planet, both in the sense of our literal planet and Galarian and throwing them in the campaign. Everything from recurring creatures like Fafnir, Gragrizant, the Sandpoint Devil, because you couldn't make a book about unique monsters in Pathfinder without bringing up the Sandpoint Devil, right? Of course not. And in so doing, it gives you more lore and a ritual in which you might maybe gain the powers of the Sandpoint Devil, or uh, you might turn all of the secondary casters in the ritual into Sandpoint Devils for a minute, and then you have to survive that. We also see several creatures which are, at least to my eyes, I could be totally wrong, brand new to the game. For example, Talje, based on Korean folklore. Kuwarsis, who fleshes out the Tekratanen League, which is dope because they're a part of a campaign I'm running. You're, you're definitely not fighting this at some point, y'all. Don't, don't worry about it. Look away. It's fine. To Tehiali from Polynesian mythology. Quetzamon Kali from Arcadia. I could go on. I really could. There are a lot of monsters in this book. Y'all see my point, no matter where it is that you happen to be in the wide world that Paizo made, you can grab one of these, throw them in the world. Hell, even if you're not the right level, strictly speaking, on either end of the spectrum to deal with whatever creature it happens to be, on top of all the flavor text, on top of all the player options, on top of all the extra monsters, each of the monsters of myth has a in your campaign section which helps fill in the how do you use for example the krampus in a game where you are level one to level seven where if the gm pulls out their krampus mini and sets it on the table you're probably 10 kinds of dead 
mid-level characters obviously much better at defending wherever it happens to be versus the low-level example being just helping someone who's undergoing the test of the golden rods to again at higher level play just killing the darn thing the narrative almost literally writes itself. Obviously, if you were running from 1 to 20, you would want more than one page of stuff to flesh out your campaign, unless you're a much better GM than me, in which case one page is enough, and I bow to your skills. But sometimes a hook is all you need to get the rest of the plot flowing. Oh, also, here's a picture of an automaton core, in case you needed more. Anyway, around it, despite my objective bias, Lost Omens, Monsters of Myth, I think looks great on any shelf, whether you're looking for lore, stuff to hand to your players or something to chase your players on a given one shot and therefore it gets the tommy seal of approval but what do y'all think have we picked it up have we dug through the archives pulled everything that we've wanted out of this how will these monsters affect your world let me know down in the comments and as always thank you all so much for watching we'll see you next time